Okay, so let's start our section on MBBM. And in order for me to demonstrate the MBBM section, I have created a new project. And I have added a new folder to the project, which is going to be called Models. And that's because inside of this folder, I want to add every single class that is going to represent the model of the application. The first class that I have added is the Person class. And right now it's going to be the only one that I'll be adding for this lecture. And this class is going to implement the first interface that we are going to talk about. And that interface is the iNotify property change interface, which is going to allow the model to notify the view of any change that happens to the values of the properties of this class. So the view can actually show those changes. So to implement an interface, is you just have to do this. And the interface is the I notify property changed. And of course, we may need to add a using sentence to the system.component model. And finally, once we've added that sentence, we have to implement the interface. And the interface actually only has an event for us to implement, but we are going to be calling this event whenever the value of one property changes. So to do that, I'm going to create a private method, which is going to be void, and I'm going to call this on property change. Now you don't have to call it this way, it's just very common to call it on property changed. And the method is going to receive a parameter, which is going to be called property name, and it's a string. So the first thing that I want to do is evaluate if the property changed event has any listeners. So to evaluate if it already has any listeners, I would want to evaluate if it is not null. If it is not null, it means that the event has listeners. And so because the event has listeners, I can actually raise that event. So it takes a sender, which in this case is this, the class, and some property event arguments. So I'm going to create them like this. And I'm going to set the property name to be the second parameter for the object. So now that I have this method, I would actually like to call the, that method on the setter of every single property of the class. So of course, I need to add some properties first, and I'm going to add three properties. So the first one is going to be a string, and it's going to be the name. The second one is going to be a string also, and it's going to be the last name. And finally, I would like to have another property which is going to be a string as well, but it, this is going to be full name. Okay, so on the setter of every single of these properties, I would like to call the onProperty change method. So I erase the event, and what I want to pass is the name of the property, which in this case is name. Now, when the name changes, I would also like to change the full name property. And that is just because when the name changes, the full name should change as well. So I will call again the onProperty change method. And I'm going to send the full name property as the argument. Now the same goes to the last name. Uh, only I am going to be sending last name as the first property. And the full name 
well I will just be calling a full name like this and that's it my class is ready to be bound and to start using MVVM another thing that I would like to do is to add a constructor to the class so in here I will define a constructor and I want to set something to the properties by default but only if I'm in the same time this means that whenever the application is running I don't want to create those properties or to set some values to those properties but I do want to set some values to the properties on the same time so I can actually evaluate if the binding is happening correctly and I can also help the designers understand without having to run the application how the application is looking and we'll take a look at that in just a minute but you would like to do something like this to evaluate if the application is on design mode you would like to do this on the constructor so you evaluate if the design mode is enabled or meaning that currently we are on design mode then I would like to set in the name the name property to be my name and the same to the last name property now because the property full name changes whenever the last name and the name change this means that now the full name should have also something okay so now let's move to the design part of the application and I have here the main page the channel which is just the one that I'm going to use and the first thing that I want to do is create a namespace or call the namespace where the person class is located so I would like to define a new namespace which I, I'm going to call just M for model and As you can see, I can make the reference to the win10 underscore mvvm.models, which, as you can see, is the exact same namespace to the person class. And so now I can add some resources to the page from that particular namespace. And I'm going to set a key to be person. Now before I can actually use this, I'm going to comment this out for just a second. I would like to build the solution. And so once the application has been built, I don't get any errors and I can start using my research. So the first thing that you should know is that we are using data binding. So the first thing to do is to set the data context of the container in this case this grid so the data context is going to be bound to a particular source and that source is a static resource in this case and it's the person that we have defined here as a resource okay so the grid now has a data context a context for the data that is going to be shown into that grid and the source to that data context is a static resource because we've added it right in the resources of, for the page and the key is just person so now everything that is inside of the grid is aware that the context is this person so I could now actually start doing something like this the stack panel in here has the exact same data context as its parent and so on and so forth so I'm just going to set this to be vertically aligned to the center horizontally aligned to the center and inside of this stack panel I'm going to define a text box now the text box remember still has the data context of the grid which is the person unless I specify otherwise 
If I don't, it just takes the data context of his parents. Okay, so the text box has a text property. And instead of writing something here, some default value, I'm going to bind the value to a property. Now I could set um, the path to be name in this case. But since the path is the default property to be set when binding, I can actually just set binding name like this, which is the exact same thing to do binding path equals name. It's up to you, but you can do something like this. Okay, now the text box is bound to the property name of the person. Now I would actually like to set the mode to be two-way. We talked about it in the previous lecture, so whenever the value changes on the model, it changes on the view. But also, if I set the mode to two-way, when the value changes on the view, it changes on the model. And so I would like to set the exact same thing for a second one, but this is going to be bound to last name, also two-way, and finally I'm going to add a text block which is going to be bound the text of the text box the text block is going to be bound to full name and in this case I don't need a two-way binding because I just want to set the full name when it changes on the model so let's take a look at how it looks and it's a little tiny so let me just make this of a width of 400 and I'm going to set this to be foreground white and as you can see the binding is actually setting the name and the last name already and I, I have to do something to set the full name so whenever the full name is set I want not to return full name but I will actually like to return name plus last name, uh, maybe a space between them, like this. So now if I build this one more time and I go back to the main page, you can see that now the full name is also bound to the text block. Now let's just run this right now just to check that everything is correctly done. And what we should be able to see is that those values, those, those default values, don't show up on runtime. As you can see here, because we said that only on design time will those values be set. However, if I start typing and as soon as I remove the cursor from this text box, look what happens to the, la to the full name. It actually has that text inside of it without having to add anything else but data binding. And so if I add my last name, look what happens to the full name. So hopefully you will be you were able to see it. Let's try it one more time. I'll add something else to my to my last name. You can see that whatever is on the first name and on the last name is bound to the property full name and those are bound to the view. So hopefully now you understand how the iNotify property changed interface works. So without further ado, I have to encourage you again to go and check my Windows Universal App Development course. Now we will be covering everything about MVVM here on YouTube in the coming videos. But if you want to learn just a lot more about other stuff regarding Windows Universal App Development, go ahead and check this course. Like I said, during the course, we talk about a lot of things, not only MBBM. In the course, you could actually find the foundations of using SAML with C Sharp. You, would, uh, you can also learn a little bit more about object-oriented programming, 
we will actually be integrating Visual Studio Online as a version control of your Windows applications. Uh, we will be covering adding more pages to an application. We are going to be covering text to speech and speech to text so you can talk directly to your application or so your application can talk to you back. We're going to take pictures with your application. We're going to use persistence with application settings and SQLite databases, notifications through the live tiles, HTTP integration, this MBBM curse, um, Azure, sharing code between platforms, a lot of things. So why don't you go ahead and give it a, give it a look and if you like it, you like how it looks, go ahead and purchase it for only $29. Just for you who's watching this video, $29 instead of $129, which is the original price. Now you have the link right there, or you will have the link in the description below. Just make sure to check it out and start getting ready for Windows 10.